Welcome, welcome, welcome. In this next series of videos, we're going to discuss a variety of examples that go into a little bit more depth about recurrence relations. Now, this next problem is about a circle and thinking about all of the different uh, you know, pieces that we can make and counting those pieces. It relates to two previous problems that we've discussed in previous videos. One, the carrot cake problem, where we tried to make the maximum number of pieces and we were allowed to move the pieces. It ended up being a doubling pattern. And two, the other previous problem that this kind of looks back on is the pizza problem. In the pizza problem, we weren't allowed to move the, the pieces of the pizza after we made a cut. We again wanted to find the maximum a number of pieces and it end up, ended up being um, something along the lines of adding consecutive integers together. So here's another variation of that style of problem. So we want to keep those problems in mind as we look forward to this one. So this one says there are n points on a circle, every two of which are joined by a line or a chord, we can call it. And no three chords pass through a common point. So if two lines intersect, another line doesn't come through that same intersection point. So we're going to let a sub n be the number of regions within the circle. So we're going to count how many regions we get. And we'll start by just finding a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then we'll try to find a formula that gives us a sub n in general. So what I'd like to do is just go through and do some counting. We'll start off with the first one and we'll just count, okay, there is one piece. And the next one, there are two pieces. In the next example, we have three points and we connect all of those points. And this time we get one, two, three, and four pieces in total. So as we go forward, we continue on in this pattern. So in the next example, we have four points on our circle representing a sub four, and then we connect all the possible connections from one dot to another dot. So if we count the number of pieces that end up uh, you know, being sectored off in our circle. We have four on the outside of that square and then four more on the inside of that square to make eight in total. So I'd like you to try the next example. Try to figure out what a sub five is. Try to figure out what that number is. Notice that we've again wrote five different points on our circle and we've connected all possibilities. Every pair of points is connected, and we've made sure that the intersection points don't have three lines going through them. They only have two lines going through them, so we pick the points in that way. So this is one correct way that you could you know, pick these points and connect the lines. So try to figure out what a sub 5 is, and try to think about what's going on with this sequence. Try to think about what maybe a sub six is, and so on and so on. So pause the video now, give that a try. Okay, so there are 16 different pieces. And if you haven't yet tried the next example, a sub six, let's go ahead and give that one a try. So on the screen now is one correct way of drawing the circle for a sub six with all the connections. Try to count how many pieces come up now. I'll give you a chance to pause. So if you went through and counted all of them and you ended up count, counting 31 different pieces within this circle, you counted it correctly. So a sub 6 is 31. Now looking back, you may have naturally thought, okay, in this sequence we have 1, and then 2, and then 4, 8, 16. It almost feels like we have a doubling pattern. Multiply by 2, 2, 2, 2 to 16. But that pattern all of a sudden breaks down when we go from 16 to 31. So what's going on here? It is correct that this number here is 31. It's not 32. 
it's a very good lesson to tell us that we shouldn't just look at the numbers and try to find the next number in a sequence. So if you've ever seen a skill testing question or something like that that says, here's a list of numbers, tell me the next number in the sequence, and maybe it tells you 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16, and it might be natural to think that the next number is 32, but really we have no way of knowing unless we dig a little bit deeper. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to explain why we have 31 and what sequence is actually appearing here. So in this sequence, we've arrived at 31. Let's try to think of all of the pieces that we're getting in this picture. We'll try to think of every line that we end up drawing. So every line that's drawn is connecting two points. So the number of lines that appear in this picture are all possible pairs of points. So let's remind ourselves, how do we calculate all possible pairs of points to get the number of lines? Well, we can calculate that by saying n, there's n points, and picking all pairs. So n choose 2. Okay, now, these lines, as we draw them, if we remember the, the pizza problem, we get a new piece to count within our circle every time there's an intersection point. How about we think about this line that we're drawing? So as we're drawing this line right here, we get you know, this piece that was 1 before is now 2, the 23 and the 28 that we counted. But then once we hit an intersection point, then that process starts all over again. We get the 19 and the 24. This region right here was one piece before, but now it's two. Every time you hit an intersection point, that process occurs, giving us an extra piece. So we're also interested in the number of intersection points. Okay, so now let's try to count the number of intersection points. Let's say we look at this intersection point right here, and we want to think of a way of counting it. Well, that intersection point corresponds to two lines that you know, make that intersection point. So there's this line right here, and the other line that we make that intersection point with. And the, the line has two points, so the point right there, and the point right there, and the point right there, and the point right there. So these two lines refer back to four points. Every time you pick four points, let's say we picked this point here, this point, and that point, and instead we pick this point right here. Every time we pick four points, it refers to two lines that cross exactly once. So the number of intersection points within our circle is n choose 4, all the number of ways of picking four points. So one final uh, piece that we need to think about here is the circle itself. When we start off the problem, there is one circle, which is one piece within our circle. And then as we draw lines, every time we draw a line, we get a new piece. And every time that line makes an intersection point, we get another new piece. So the number of, of pieces, or a sub n, is equal to 1 for the circle itself, plus n choose 2 plus n choose 4. There's our general formula for finding the number of pieces within our circle that has n points on the outside. Let's test this formula out. Let's see if when we plug in 6 here, we do indeed get 31 as we counted above. So for example, a sub 6. What is this? 
So if we plug in 6 to the other side, we get 6 choose 2 plus 6 choose 4. Now, 6 choose 2 and 6 choose 4 are the same. You can think of any time I'm picking two objects from 6, I'm secretly not picking four objects from 6 as well. So we could rewrite this as 1 plus 2 times 6 choose 2. So that would equal 1 plus 2 times 6 factorial divided by 2 factorial divided by 4 factorial. And all of that would equal 1 plus 2 times 6 times 5 all divided by 2. So there we would get 1 plus the 2's would cancel out, so you get 30 and we get 31 just as expected. 31 is our answer, and 31 was also calculated above when we did the counting one by one. So this formula works for any n value that you might want to plug in that's a positive integer. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you on the next one.